So of course we have to start out with our shrimp. I'm gonna push this bowl to the side. <laughs> Roman is just bringing in all of his toys from, you good? Okay, he's just bringing in all his toys from outside. But I'm gonna use this shrimp. This is just from Aldi. This is what, 12 ounces of frozen shrimp. Of course, it is gonna be a lot cheaper if you buy them for one, uncooked, because of course, if they are cooked, someone is doing the work for you, so they're gonna charge you for that. Also, if they are peeled and deveined and they have the tail off, you are being charged for that. So if you buy it with the peel on, un, un, unveined? undeveined uh, if you buy it with it, like a full shrimp together intact you are going to pay a lot less because you're going to have to do all the work yourself compared to having them this way so i went ahead and of course drain them as best as possible then what i like to do at this point take like a long paper towel mine i for some, whatever reason i don't know sam's club switched out the paper towels they used to come like this length and now they're just like super long anyway this is not a video about paper towels so i'm going to try to dab off just a little bit of the water i'm not going for like they have to be so ew okay you might want to pick through and just make sure that everything is off oh terrible okay anyway i'm not going for like an incredibly super strong sear where it needs to be like just no moisture on it whatsoever i'm just we're working on it here okay just keep pat pat and if there's some moisture like i said it's okay there's not gonna be is it okay yeah make sure you pick through your oh how terrible okay the rest of that should be okay okay and yeah i just have to start out like that then another thing i wanted to mention about the shrimp specifically or just i guess seafood in general unless you live right by the water and by by the water i mean like within a five minute drive and let's say seafood is predominantly like sold it whatever this location is near your home do not buy fresh seafood if it is not fresh like catch of the day at a seafood market a small place because a lot of people don't know this actually when you go to a grocery store and your grocery store says seafood section or seafood place, you guys know we live in Texas, but we also live in central Texas, in the middle of Texas, maybe a little bit up, but we still live in the middle of Texas. We do not live down by, can I consider that the coast? We do not live down by Houston or wherever else is down there. We do not live there. So we do not have local places that are catching fish, shrimp, whatever daily and bringing it down or bringing it up to us. We just don't. So whenever you go to a grocery store and they have like a seafood section, you are buying previously frozen. They just did the work for you. So that is why it costs more at the, the market little place in your grocery store. And even if they go to like your Costco, your Sam's Club, unless you live by the water, that stuff is not fresh. Unless you see it actually live moving around, that is when you know it is real. Like when you see a bunch of crabs or lobsters or whatever in the tank where they are like alive and well and undead, then that's when they're fresh, they're good quality, you can actually see everything. But when everything is just like pre-cut, pre-chopped, dead, whatever there, you don't know how long that stuff has been frozen before it is being resold to you. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with buying it at the counter that way. Just know that when you are paying that premium, you are paying for someone to do the work of defrosting it for you, which you easily could have done in your own freezer, your fridge, or not in your freezer, in your fridge. Anyway, I just thought I would put that out there because I see so many people all the time say, oh, well, I'm gonna get fresh seafood because it tastes so much better. Baby girl, no, it does not. You are paying that premium for nothing. Okay, I just had to let you guys know that. Now we can go on to seasoning. We're gonna use a bunch of different seasonings, but like I told you guys, these are the best shrimp tacos I've ever had. I'm gonna do some black pepper, and do I measure? Not really, just until like my ancestors tell me that's enough. Okay, but for the sake, what is that? A quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Then we're gonna do the same for some salt. Also gonna add some of the Trader Joe's fiery honey mustard. There of course is a lot more in here than just mustard powder, but there's honey powder, there's a little bit of sugar, salt, ground mustard, onion, garlic. It's just to me a good all-purpose seasoning, especially for like meats, I like, like, like a big roast or something. I don't know, it's really good. So if you don't have this, I guess I would say use a little bit of mustard powder, but just a little bit less than an eighth of a teaspoon. I guess when I'm editing this, I'll figure it out, but do you guys hear the birds? Besides like Roman playing in the background, do you guys hear the birds? 
It sounds so pretty. You would literally think it's spring. I don't know. I'm so excited. I've talked about my small business like a million times, but I cannot wait to start making like flowery desserts. And I have a cake coming up this weekend that has like flowers all over it. And I'm so excited. Anyway, I'm going to use a little bit of smoked paprika. Remember, just for color, not really flavor unless it's smoked. In this case, it is. But it's not that much flavor. Then one of my favorite seasonings. I hope this is not seasonal. Last time I went, it was around Thanksgiving time and they still had some. So I hope I have more of these in the pantry because if not, I'm going to be super sad because, oh, nobody can see that. I have the tiniest bit left. I have like the hiccups and I'm trying to suppress them so you guys don't hear them in the video and I don't have to keep randomly like clicking together other episodes. Oh, okay. A bunch of timers are going off. I'm going to add some of this. This to me gives you the most like citrusy. I mean, obviously that's what it is, but the most citrusy taste and flavor that you would not be able to get from anything else, to be completely honest, unless you put a bunch of lemon zest, lime zest. Um, what else is in here? Garlic, salt, onion, black pepper, coriander, cumin, a bunch of like islandy spices. Oh, it's heavenly. Then this one, I do not know how to pronounce this, but a Jika Georgian seasoning. It's spicy to me and that's really it. I know it says garlicky and aromatic and savory. It just to me is a lot of red pepper because that's the first ingredient in there. There's a couple other things, but it's, it's just spice and oh, it's so good. And I know you guys are looking like, holy shit, this is a lot of seasoning in this bowl. But trust me, you need flavor when you are cooking. If you cannot smell it while you are putting it on your food, do not feel that you are going to taste it. Yes, we're gonna bloom the spices and cook them and everything, but if you don't smell it in here, you're not gonna taste it in here. And by in here, I'm pointing at myself, but you guys just can't see it. Then I like to take a spoon. And remember, I did say that there is a little bit of moisture at the bottom of this, so I don't feel the need to add any type of oil or anything like that. And I'm already gonna add some oil to the pan, of course, to develop a little bit of color on the meat. But I said on the meat, on the shrimp. Ugh. And of course, when we make this, if you are making this for a family of, well, more than two people, then I would definitely recommend getting more than 12 ounces um, because, yeah, 12 ounces. I know like a portion of what seafood is like three, four ounces, something like that. Um, yeah, your girl needs more to eat than this. Yes, we are going to make them into tacos, but still, your girl likes to eat. Okay, pretty good. Now, it's only like four o'clock as I'm filming this, so I would be lying if I said that I'm not gonna put saran wrap and throw this in the refrigerator just to marinate. Um, but I don't wanna cook everything right now. But if you are gonna cook it right now, this is good to go and we'll start working on all the ingredients, all the other ingredients. So by the magic of editing, I'll be back. For our coleslaw mix, I'm gonna start in our bowl here, but I'm gonna move that to the side. Then here I have a bag of salad mix. Of course, half of it is gone because we definitely ate it before I started filming this video. But any bag of salad mix will work. Do not feel like it has to be this one. But if you don't wanna use the salad mix, feel free to use like a coleslaw mix. I just didn't have that. And what I did have was this thing of salad. But besides there being actual lettuce in here, there's cabbage. So, you know, cabbage, coleslaw, the whole situation works. But before we add that in, I'm gonna do our like dressing sauce mixture. So I'm gonna take this, <laughs> this gigantic thing of mayo, I almost said mayonnaise, of mayo from Sam's Club. And I'm gonna add about, I'd say about a quarter of a cup. I don't want too much. I'm not really like a big, big mayo fan, but obviously that's what you need. Then we're gonna add some relish. Remember, always dill, never sweet. It, of course, adds sweetness and that is not what you want. We're gonna add about a tablespoon. Then I'm gonna add some lemon juice. This is about half of a lemon. Now this will kind of depend. For one, it'll depend how much juice you get out of your lemon, but then also how tangy and like zippy you like it. I like a lot of citrus for this one. I'm gonna add some cilantro. Instead of having to get out an entire cutting board and make it a whole situation here, I tell you guys, scissors are the way to go, especially when it comes down to cutting cilantro. Don't worry, I already washed it. But those herb scissors, there's really no reason for them when you have scissors here. Okay, I think that is good enough, I'd say. About a quarter of a cup, actually, maybe a little bit more. And the salad mix that we have has a little bit of cilantro in it, I think. It's this one, yeah, it does, but can never go wrong with too much cilantro. 
Then from there, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt, a couple of cracks. Remember, we're already, <laughs> we're already seasoning. <laughs> We're already seasoning our shrimp and everything else, so you don't have to go heavy with the salt. And then, of course, black pepper as well. And if you don't have lemon juice, feel free to, of course, use lime juice. But then if you don't have either of those, it, for one, is going to add flavor. But if you just don't have that or don't feel like adding it, you can definitely use water or even a little bit of apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to take our little whiskey whisk. Okay, I still feel like this is pretty thick. I'm going to add a little bit more. We're going to give it a taste. And yes, I'm dipping my finger in here. Mm. That's really good, but it definitely needs more salt and more lemon juice. We're going to go in with this other lemon. Oh, it's kind of a lot. Okay. Yeah. After that lemon juice, it definitely needs more salt. And actually now that I taste it too, more black pepper. Then I'm going to give it a stir one more time. Taste-wise, it is perfect. I went ahead and grabbed a spoon. Then I'm just gonna pour all of this mix in here. To me, oh, this coleslaw, I don't care whether it's like shrimp tacos or just like fried fish, grilled fish, baked, whatever. I feel like bubba gum when it's like, it, when it's like, when they're talking about all the different kinds of shrimp and this and that and mm, it's so good. Okay, so the shrimp, oh, how many times am I gonna say the word okay? All right. <clears throat> What, okay, what transition am I gonna use? What if I'm trying to figure out if I can even say my sentence without using the word okay? Um, alrighty then, we're gonna use the word alrighty. So the coleslaw mix, you definitely want to make it just as you are going to serve. This is not even something I would make an hour ahead of time. However, whether you're using the salad mix that I'm using or a traditional coleslaw mix, it wilts down and it gets super soggy and that is not what you want whatsoever. So trust me, this is something you wanna make just before you are about to eat and just before you cook the shrimp because of course shrimp cook very quickly so they don't need a lot of time. So that's why we're gonna have this over to the side. While I have our pan getting nice and hot, before I add anything to it, let's talk tortillas. I'm just gonna use some yellow corn tortillas I just feel like they work best for whenever it comes down to fish tacos. I know you guys know I am a sucker for a good flour tortilla. So realistically, whether you're using corn or flour or prepackaged or making it yourself, anything is going to work. And even if you just want to eat this by itself as a side, oh, my mouth, I'm, my mouth is watering because this is so incredibly good. And then I also forgot to mention, but for the coleslaw, topping situation that we made. If you do not want to use mayo or don't have mayo, feel free to use sour cream or Greek yogurt. Just probably not like a flavored one because mm. once our pan gets a bit warm, then we can go ahead and take our shrimp and we're just going to add it all in there. Remember, it's going to have some moisture in there and that is fine because we are just looking for them to be cooked and flavor development. Eh. Not much is going to change other than the fact that they are going to cook, and that is it. And don't forget that seafood cooks very, very quickly. I'm going to try to get it in a flat layer. Let's see if that happens. If not, it is okay. And I am working on a high heat, and then, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a non-stick pan. And while that is going, I am going to warm up the tortillas on the side. Okay, shrimp are cooking super, super quick. Now, of course, they cook down a lot, so it, it just happens. It's okay. So that's why I recommend, too, if you want to get more for a bigger family, definitely do it. <clears throat> and don't worry about all of this saucy, juicy goodness. It is uh, incredible. And I'm sorry if you guys hear all of these jump cuts. My, I don't know what is going on with my voice, but I just keep having to go. <clears throat> anyway. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off because I think we are pretty good. I swear to you guys, when I go to eat, if I find any of those shells like I did when I was trying to dab off all the excess, I'm going to be so annoyed. But I have the tortillas. I know you guys can't see them. I'm just over here flipping them. Um, I highly recommend getting a little tortilla warmer situation. I got mine from Walmart and I've had it for years. And to be honest, I forget to use it a lot of the time. But you just have to remember... 
if you are going to use it you have to use it correctly i know i am so close into the camera here but you put down a towel and then you put them in here and just lay this over make sure you keep everything closed and warm this is not something you want open at the table okay we will come back in like five seconds and show you how we played it